Hey guys, Thunder E here, and today is another battle bit. Now this time it's between the PlayStation DualSense Edge uh, versus the Xbox Elite 2 to find out which is the best gaming controller. Now you guys have asked me to do this, I don't know why, because it's like comparing uh, an iPhone to a Galaxy. They're two very different, but do the same things. Now, if you join us for the very first time, don't forget to subscribe hit the notification icon and uh, get ready to watch more videos like this. So the PlayStation DualSense Edge is the latest Pro Controller directly from PlayStation, and PlayStation's first, I believe. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. And it does look like a standard PlayStation 5 controller. And we're looking at it side to side. You can see that it bears same similarities, but there are some key differences. One is the colors. You do have, of course, black buttons and black D-pads and uh, you also have just some nice etching here of the PlayStation buttons on the trackpad itself, which is nice. Now, this controller is fully customizable, just like the Xbox controller, the Xbox Elite 2. And so there's some really key features around the controller. First off, let's talk about price. The PlayStation controller is $199, while the Xbox Elite controller, Elite 2 controller has a couple of price points. If you're getting the core version, which comes in white right here, the core version is priced at $120. I've, gotten, I've seen it for 99 bucks, and this controller does not come with a case like you see here, or any of the paddles or things in the back. You have to buy that on your own. But if you just want this core controller with its smooth feel and also uh, buttons and 40 hour battery life, then you can do that. You can also get the Elite, uh, Elite 2, which comes in all black at price at 169, or you can get a customized version with custom paint job and of course your own um, engraving on here with your name, as I have says, board at work. That's a little bit more, it depends on how you customize it, the pricing goes up from that 169 uh, price point. So that is there. Now, both of them have cases, uh, both of them are hard shell cases. One is more plastic, the PlayStation has a more plastic feel to it, PlayStation logo, while the Xbox One uh, feels like it's cloth, but it's still a hard shell case. Both cases open them up, reveal, of course, storage areas, uh, giving you access to all your um, uh, expansions to your controller. You do have braided cables for both devices, which is nice. The PlayStation cable is longer than the Xbox cable, but I'll get to why that is the case in a second. Now, when we actually look at both cases, we do see that they both have exterior flaps at the back, allowing you to access um, for charging, which is pretty nice. Um, and then you do have all your accessories here. Now, the difference is in the Xbox case, there is this charging dock, which you can place anywhere if you want to, or back in the case if you want to keep it all centralized. Now, both cases have uh, a number of thumbsticks. So you've got four thumbsticks you can swap around in here with uh, as well. And then with the PlayStation version, you have four uh, paddles Two of them are regular paddles. One is a dome style paddle. So this is the regular paddle. So you can see here, and this is the dome style paddle from PlayStation. So that's a little bit different. I will say I do like the way the dome style paddle works, less interference or tapping either by, by mistake. While the Xbox has four paddles in total because the Xbox has four paddle connections for the Elite controller. So there's one P1, P2, P3, P4. So there's more customization with the paddles here. There's a shorter paddle and there's a longer paddle while the PlayStation only has two paddle connectors at the back. So that is something again that is different. The PlayStation controller also comes with a lock button for the USB cord. So while you are gaming to ensure that it is, com is purely connected here and it won't slip off, use this uh, lock, if you will. You kind of open it up this way and then you thread it through and uh, yeah, then you can lock it in. So you get the idea here and that's pretty much what it does. Boom. So that's the general idea there with the lock. Now battery life is going to be a big one with the PlayStation DualSense Edge coming in at between five to eight hours, depending on gameplay. So it's not pretty long, but you do have a long braided cable. So that allows you to charge and play in game 
as effectively as possible while the xbox elite series 2 comes in at a whopping 40 hours of battery life so you can game for quite long sessions xbox definitely wins this section so what can these controllers do and how are they different well first of all of course one's a playstation controller one's an xbox controller so your your thumbsticks are in two different positions for each of these controllers which is fine now, the one thing with the PlayStation controller, you've got a couple of unique customization. One is the fact that you do have this dome style um, uh, paddle, which is nice. And then you also have these function keys right here. So the function keys that are right below your thumbsticks allow you to switch between profiles while you're playing. So once you tap on it, you can go between different profiles uh, and access the profiles that you want to, which is nice. Uh, you can also go ahead and swap uh, the caps for your thumbsticks. It's quite easy opening this up and switching to something else. Now, the one thing is that they are longer thumbsticks and shorter ones, but not as high. This one is still uh, just slightly longer than the standard ones that you have here, which are pretty short and you've got some shorter ones here. Now, the other thing you can do also again is you can open up the release button. Now, there is a release button here at the bottom of the controller. I'm just going to use my tool here, top this, and this opens up this flap right above your thumbsticks, revealing quick access to your analog sticks here. Now, this is great because you can open this up and you can swap them out. Right now, it only comes in replaceable colors, matching colors. It costs about 20 bucks, but I can see in the future coming in different colors, but also this helps if you have drifting issues with your controller, you just pop it out and pop a new one in and you are good to go. So that actually is pretty cool. And then of course, just putting this back up and snap, and then you're, you're good. So. It's quite easy to actually customize this controller here with that. While the Xbox controller, it's a bit different. Uh, you, of course, of course, replace the thumbsticks, the kind of magnetic locks there, and you can go super long. It's much longer here. Um, and then you can go, go pretty short and go with the gray one here. You can have different colors if you customize it. Your D-pad, you can swap that out as well, quite easy. And you can swap in a new one here, so you have that. And then you've got the four paddles at the back, which you can either place in or take out. You have that ability to do that, and you can customize that. As you saw with both controllers, they do have adjustable uh, triggers. So you can go ahead and adjust the triggers for both controllers. Now, of course, this the PlayStation controller still has its, you know, um, it's specialized triggers compared to what you have with the, with the Xbox. But if you want to manually customize it while you're gaming and say you're in a shooter and you want something quick, you can actually do that. Or you're in a racing game, whether it's Forza or, you know, Gran Turismo, you can change it to, to full access. So that's there and that's available for both controllers. USB connection for both of them, so you can actually connect your USB cable. Although the, the Xbox controller, Xbox Elite 2 has pogo pins, which works for, of course, the dock that I mentioned here. So you have that as well. Now, when you're looking at both controllers, you're asking, okay, which is better? And honestly, it depends on what you use them for and how you play and which console you have. Again, I think this is probably one of the best controllers for the PlayStation. The one thing I'll mention with the DualSense Edge is I wish it actually had more paddles at the back for people who are looking for extra customization or would use the function buttons for some of that functionality. I know it's kind of off key, but that would actually help. Now, the ability to swap out the uh, analog sticks, especially if you have drifting issues, I think is great. Uh, but again, the inability to not customize the D-pad is something that I wish was there, especially for its price point at $199. Now, when we look at the Xbox One, a lot of customization is involved in this, which is great. D-pad, thumbsticks, you can swap them out, swap out the caps. You cannot swap out the thumbsticks, so that's something the PlayStations have um, as an edge, especially if you're having drifting issues in the future. I do like the fact that it's got four uh, paddles at the back, you can customize that. And in terms of software, both of them have very robust software uh, in terms of customizing the controller itself. PlayStation has added a little bit more feature sets to it, uh, especially 
with the function keys, adding those uh, different profiles there, which you can do with the Xbox. You can't actually access them locally off the controller. Uh, but I do like that with the PlayStation controller. I think it just depends on what you want to, want to use them for. Connectivity to the PC is better with the Xbox because it's pretty easy with the sync button. You still can't connect with via Bluetooth with the other, but the Xbox wins there on that PC side. But if I had to pick, it would be the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. This thing has 40 hour battery life. I do like the extra paddles at the back and uh, the opposable thumbsticks are just my thing. So tell me, which of these controllers do you prefer? Do you prefer the PlayStation controller? Do you prefer the Xbox controller? Leave your thoughts down below, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy the entertainment.